Hello everyone, it's Paul with TutorU, and today we're going to be going over algebraic expressions and variables. Algebraic expressions and variables are all over the place on the GED, whether it's this year in 2022, or in the next or the one after that. If you like this content and you want me to keep producing some more, make sure you hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. It'll help my channel grow, and we can help more people. So, let's get into the examples and see what we're talking about with algebraic expressions and variables. The very first thing that we need to define when talking about algebraic expressions and variables is, what is a variable? The definition of a variable is very straightforward. It is a letter used to represent a number. The variable is the placeholder for a number. Those are the main things that you want to remember. The most common letters that they use for variables are X, Y, and Z. I strongly encourage you to take a screenshot if you're watching this video from the phone because you do want to remember the definitions. If you have a pen and paper handy or any type of notebook and saving it for later because it's going to come in handy as we get deeper into mathematics. Taking notes will help improve your studying abilities and you'll score better on any type of test that you take in the future. Write down the definition of a variable or just take a screenshot for now and study it later. Let's move on to the definition of algebraic expression and then we'll start looking at some examples and working through some problems together. Now that we have variables under our belt, let's define an algebraic expression. It has numbers and variables. Sometimes operation signs separate the numbers and variables. What does that mean? It means that sometimes there's an addition sign, a subtraction sign, multiplication or division and it's separating out the variables from the integers or other numbers. One of the main things to remember with algebraic expressions is that it does not contain an equal sign. If you remember that, you should be doing okay when it comes to defining and understanding the algebraic expressions. Let's get into some examples so you can really see what's happening when we're talking about these expressions. Here we have our first example of an algebraic expression. I'll underline the numbers with blue, the variable with red, and I'll circle the operation sign with green. It's kind of like magic making those colors appear. The really important thing with algebraic expressions is the terminology and the language behind them. There are different ways of saying this algebraic expression. I could say 3w minus 12, or I could say 12 less than the product of 3 and w. In the next section, I'll go through some examples of different ways of saying algebraic expressions with words versus what the algebraic expression is. Then after that, I'll go through and I'll give you some example problems that you might find on the GED. We have the algebraic expression of x plus 4, also known as 4 more than a number. Then we have something like x minus 5, also known as 5 less than a number. Then we have something like the algebraic expression of 3x, also known as 3 times a number. Then we have something like x squared, which is also known as a number times itself. There are all different types of ways to write algebraic expressions with words, and I strongly encourage you to find one of those charts so you have a better understanding of all of the words that represent algebraic expressions. I'm going to move on into some example problems of things that you might find on the GED. I'm sorry, I know it's a lot of words up on the screen, but we are going to go over a lot of examples of word problems so you feel more comfortable with them. If this helps you with word problems, please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. It would be awesome to know that I'm helping you. Let's go through this word problem. Gabe's current age is three times his sister's current age. If x is his sister's current age, what is an expression that represents Gabe's current age? The key here is that Gabe's current age is three times his sister's current age. So what do we know his sister's age is? Well, it is x. So let's write that down. Now that we have that written down, it's three times x. So we just put the three in front. That's the expression that represents this word problem, so nothing to worry about. Now we have our next word problem. I know I'm really sorry, a lot of words on your screen, but I promise you I'm going to work through these with you, so no worries. A plumber charges $55 per hour, X, and spends $20 a day on gasoline. What is an algebraic expression that represents his net earnings? So it's actually really straightforward we have our $55 per hour, which is another way of writing 55 times X, and he spends $20 a day, which is minus 20. 
That is our expression for this word problem. One more word problem. The width of Kevin's yard is 10 feet more than twice the width of his garage. Write an expression that describes the width of his yard if G represents the width of the garage. The first thing that you need to focus on is that G represents the width of his garage. So let's underline G represents the width of his garage. The next important bit of information is that the yard is 10 feet more than twice the width of that. So how do we write that out? Well, it's two times G for twice the width of his garage. So two G and 10 more than two G. So it's two G plus 10. And that is the width of the yard. The really big thing to remember with any of these word problems is that you just need to extract the data that you need, not all of the other extra words that are on the screen. Focus on what's important. Like in this example, I need to know the G represents the width of the garage. Then I need to know what is happening to G. So it's two times G, the width of the garage, plus 10, 10 feet more than that. This word problem right here is going to be the most difficult word problem example that we covered today. A number times itself added to the product of five and X and that quantity is subtracted from the difference of six and X. I want you to take a moment, pause this video, find a piece of paper and a pen, and write this down and try to solve it for yourself before you look at how I'm going to do it. This will be a really good practice and I want you to comment down below if you got this problem right. Let's go through and work this problem. So I'm going to start working it right now, so... Pause the video. I always read these problems backwards when I actually start the process of solving it. So the very first thing that I'm going to write down is the difference of six and X. So what is the difference of six and X? That is another way of saying six minus X. We will then put this expression inside of parentheses because it's separate from the other part of this word problem. The other component to this expression is a number times itself added to the product of five and X. So what is a number times itself? That is another way of saying X squared, and it is added to the product of five and X. So we have X squared plus five X as our other expression. So then I ask you, what is happening? between these two expressions, it says that that quantity is subtracted from the other expression. So six minus X minus X squared plus five X. Now I regret to inform you that we're not done with this problem. We have to simplify the algebraic expression. I regret to inform you that we're not done with this algebraic expression we first must simplify everything to its simplest terms. The way that we go about doing that is by distributing this minus sign through the parentheses so we can get rid of the parentheses in the entire problem. When we distribute this minus sign, it looks something like this. We will distribute it through to the x squared and to the 5x. Another way of thinking of distribution is multiplying through the parentheses. Once we do it, there are no more parentheses in the expression. So what we are left with is six minus X minus X squared, because the minus times the X squared, minus five X, because the minus times the positive five X. The next thing I'm going to do is rewrite this problem where X squared or the negative X squared is the first part of our expression. So it's negative X squared. Then we'll put everything else that's similar next to each other. So we have a minus five X minus X. And then lastly, we have the plus six. Now that we have everything in order of their powers, we just group or we simplify the like terms. So we have a minus five X minus X. And that is another way of saying minus six X. Then we just drop everything down. So we are left with negative X squared minus six X plus six. And that is our final answer. 
I know, that's a lot. I am so sorry, everybody. But, on the plus side, we're at the end of our video. If this video helped you out at all, please let me know. Like, comment, and subscribe. I greatly appreciate every last one of you that has watched this video to the end. You're an awesome person. Good luck with whatever test you're on, and I hope you have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you later.